Yo, so it was 9 6 green, right? I was in K2, my bro John Crons, my bro Mike, and my bro Cat. Comment gang in the building, Slim Blunt gang in the building, you heard? Like turkey wings, like raw turkey wings. You heard? I can't unlock my arms, I'm walking around looking crazy. Yo, I'm in Harlem, right? On 146th Street. That's my word. My man, my son that I was in 298 with, went to public school with, his pops used to live in this building. You heard? And back in the days, we used to literally get on our bikes from Brownsville and ride all the way uptown to this building for my man to go see his pops. You heard? We was wildin', bro, crossing bridges. We was bugging out. We used to get on the bike and ride all the way up here to Harlem. Word. I miss my son, John, man. I ain't speak to that dude, Raymond Bell. I ain't speak to that dude in, a, in, in eons, you heard? But wherever he at, I hope my son is all right, man, and doing good things, you heard? Word, we used to come up here, bro. When you young, you just don't care. We be on the bikes, bro. But anyway, so check it, right? Boom. When I was in Franklin, right? When I was in Franklin, I told y'all dudes that when I came to jail, I literally had no form of muscles whatsoever at all. I never had worked out in my life. I wasn't doing no push-ups, no pull-ups, none of that. You heard? I was hit. I'm talking about I had zero muscle mass, zero everything. I was twisted. So I used to be seeing dudes doing the bar. I used to be like, damn man, I gotta, I gotta learn to do the bar. So you know, my mans in them used to be gassing me like, yo, man, you got to start. And I mean, you got to start off something. And I used to be trying to do a pull-up. And I used to could not do one pull-up. I'm talking about if I put my, my arms up on the bar and try to lift my body up, nothing happened, bro. Like, it wasn't no movement. Like, you know how the average dude could do one or two pull-ups? Wasn't like that for me, bro. I couldn't do one pull-up. I just would not budge on the bar. So how dudes had to help me start doing pull-ups, of course, is they had to hold my feet. Like dudes had to hold my feet while I pull up. And while dudes is holding your feet like that, it takes it takes a lot of weight off you. So if you weigh like 180 pounds, dudes holding your feet, it's gonna take off. You're gonna be lifting like 100 pounds. So you know what I mean? you be able to pull that up. So dudes was holding my legs. I'm able to do three or four pull-ups like that. So I start getting hype. Like, I mean, my man Manon and them niggas, they like, yo, come on, let's do another set. Holding my legs. I'm hitting the ball. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, yeah, I feel good. I feel good. So, you know, I get about, so I get a few sets in, little five, six sets of doing three or four. So dudes tell me, they like, yo, that's it, chill out. You understand what I'm saying? You ain't never do the bar before. That's enough for today. You feel what I'm saying? I'm like, nah, man, that shit feel good, man. I feel good. I gotta hit me a few more of them. So niggas is like, yo, be easy, bro. You don't work out. You ain't never work out. You don't wanna pull your muscles and strain your muscles. I'm like, yo, this shit, I don't even feel, I don't even feel like nothing. Like I feel my back. I feel my back getting um stronger, hitting that bar, but I'm not really getting tired. Like I'm ready to keep going. Against niggas advice. I'm like, yo, let me get up there for a couple more sets. Every time I do a couple of more sets, I tell niggas again, yo, let me get one more set, one more set, two more sets. Niggas like, all right, you bugging out, bro. You doing too much for a nigga on the bar for the first time, my nigga. I'm like, son, I'm good, son. I'm good, my nigga. I'm about to get brolic, you heard? I'm about to be a ball masked out this motherfucker. Niggas gonna see me doing behind the neck pause, you know what I mean? eagle claws and all of that in a minute you heard i'm like i can see it already nigga i'm a master this bar you heard these pull-ups ain't nothing so i'm ODing, bro i'm hitting mad sets i'm hitting mad sets like a vet like a vet with dudes holding my legs you heard my 
nigga. I, I, I felt swole. You heard? When I got off that bar and that wreck run ended, I was like, yo, I'm about to start working now. I'm going to be a maniac. You heard? Niggas ain't going to be on my level with this bar shit in a minute. Watch how I get busy on this bar in a minute, kid. You crazy? I was hyped. I'm like, tomorrow I'm back out there hitting some more bar. Real talk. That's how I was giving it up. I'm like, yo, tomorrow I'm back out there hitting that bar. So boom. So the next day, you feel what I'm saying? I wake up. You know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little sore. I'm like, damn, my shit, my shit aching. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, back, biceps, everything was a little achy. You feel what I'm saying? And my arms was feeling a little warm. Real talk. How you doing? warm you feel what i'm saying so i'm like yo why are my arms feeling warm like that you know what i mean it's a little achy and all of that but it, you know what i mean it wasn't really nothing it wasn't really nothing so i'm like yeah you know i worked out my shit a little achy bet son i didn't know that that pain that ache that ache was like it was deeper than what i thought so you know i went back out i tried to do a pull up on the bar I just felt the whole pain shoot through my whole upper body like, oh shit, ain't gonna be no pull-ups today. Like, you feel what I'm saying? I thought my shit was good, man. I reached up on that bar, nigga, my shit was blazing my whole body. I'm like, damn, I'm like, damn, that shit hurt. Like I said, I'm good, I'm good. I'm gonna leave today alone. I'm gonna leave today alone. I'll work out tomorrow or something, hurt? So now, Anybody who ever strained muscles or pulled muscles bad, they'll tell you, like, and especially from working out, you don't feel that pain the day after the way you feel that pain two days after. Like, it's something about the muscles be taking a time to get crazy. But after two days, bro, like the day after I was, I was in pain that night, I was starting to get sore, but I went to sleep, bro. The day after I worked out, I went to sleep at night. I woke up, my nigga. I woke up like four or five in the morning. The pain woke me up. I was like this, yo, what the fuck? Nigga, my motherfucking arms was locked like this. Both my arms was locked up like this. I'm holding the phone, so I can't do both arms, but I'm gonna show you in a minute. Both my motherfucking arms was locked up like this, my nigga. I woke up, I sat up in my bed, I was like, yo, my nigga, I tried to open my arm like this. Wasn't happening, my nigga. I said, yo, what the fuck is wrong with my arm? My nigga, I'm trying to open my shit. The most excruciating pain on earth is shooting through my shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Nah, my nigga. I'm talking about both my arms, my nigga. Both my arms. I'm sitting up on my bed, both my arms like this, my nigga. I'm like, oh shit. I'm trying to open my shit like this. My shit's locked. Locked, my nigga. Real talk. So now I'm like, Oh, man, my nigga. I'm like, man, I did too many of them motherfucking pull-ups, my nigga. My shit feeling crazy. So now, my motherfucking biceps, them shits is feeling like chicken wings on the motherfucking grill. With the charcoal mad heavy burning my shits. My shits was smoldering, my nigga. That's how hot my shits was from tearing my muscle or spraining my muscle or overworking my muscle or whatever it is. Leave a comment if you know exactly what it's called that when your shit be locked up like this. But bro, my shit was generating heat, nigga. My biceps was generating heat. If I put my face like this, I could feel the heat coming from my biceps. I'm like, yo, I done did some shit to my muscles, my nigga. My arms locked the fuck up, my nigga. So now I'm walking around the dorm like this with both my arms up. Like I'm ready to snuff a nigga. Like I'm like I'm an old like like I'm Jack Johnson or one of them niggas. You heard? Like I'm an old school boxer. My shit walking around with both my shits up like this. Niggas like, yo, son, what's up? What's up with your arms, son? I'm like, 
Oh man, niggas like yo, you alright, son? I'm like son, my shit locked, my nigga. Niggas like what you mean your shit locked? I said my shit's locked, nigga. He's like just put your shit. I'm like I can't put these shits down, nigga. I can't move these shits at all, my nigga. Niggas like yo, hold on, son. Niggas trying to grab my shit. I'm like nah, 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 nah. Wasn't none of that, my nigga. You know how a chicken wing be having like the the piece that pop. You gotta pop it like pop to break it. That's how my shit was, bro. If a nigga would've pulled my shit down, my shit would've popped like a chicken wing. I'm like this, yo, son, leave my shit alone, my nigga. Niggas is like, come on, son, you can put your arms down. I'm like, nah, I can't put my arms down for a fact, my nigga. So now I'm walking around the whole motherfucking jail like this. Niggas calling chow. I'm going to the mess hall like this. You hurt? Motherfucking nigga gotta get a tray. Nigga gotta bend down and be like this. Niggas looking at me like, the fuck is wrong with this dude? Son, my shit was locked, son. My shit was locked up, my nigga, like turkey wings. Like raw turkey wings. You heard? I was fucked up, bro. I went to niggas, I'm like, yo, son, what the fuck can I do to unlock these arms? I can't unlock my arms. I'm walking around looking crazy, my nigga. You heard? Niggas like, yo, son, take a hot shower. Go in the shower, take a hot shower. I'm like, I right, bet. I go in the shower, I get up in that shower, that hot ass water. Eventually, it start opening my arms up a little bit. You heard my arms start relaxing a little bit. I'm like, all right, all right, my shit is a little bit. Nigga, once I get out that shower, dry off 10, 15 minutes later, my shit's like this. Boing! Son, my shit was stuck, bro, like an action figure. Pull my shit down, my shit be like this. Ah! Boing! Real talk, my nigga. Both my shits, nigga. My shit walking around looking mad stupid. I'm like, yo, I'll never get on that motherfucking pull-up bar again, nigga. You crazy? I'm like, nah, nigga, that shit is inhumane pulling up your body weight like that a hundred times. That's just these jail niggas, man. Jail niggas got my motherfucking arms locked up, man. They got me out here looking fucking crazy, man. Son, niggas was laughing at me in the dorm like, yo, this nigga fucked up. So I'm like, son, I need help. The shower, the hot water. Niggas like, yo, son, you got to get some muscle rub. You heard? Pause. Niggas like, you got to get some muscle rub from the clinic. So I'm like, what is that shit now? Yo, that shit got menthol in it, my nigga. Like, icy hot. But they got their own generic brand of icy hot. You put that shit on your shit. That shit will soothe your muscles a little bit, my nigga. So I'm like, shh. I got to get some motherfucking Icy Hot, my nigga. I got to get the fake jail Icy Hot. You know what I mean? So I get the motherfucking muscle rub. I go to the clinic. I tell them niggas, I'm like, yo, I worked out too hard. I fucked my shit up. It's starting to be too freezing. I'm going to have to start doing some of this story in the car. I'm like, yo. I'm like, yo, I fucked my shit up, bro. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I need some muscle rub. You know what I mean? So the nigga prescribed me some muscle rub. I go back to the motherfucking house. I rub the muscle rub in. I try to rub, rub the rust, muscle rub into my bicep. That shit is hot ass menthol, my nigga. So now that shit, that shit got my shit more on fire, my nigga. You heard? Now my shit's just hurting, smelling minty. You heard? My shit burning. That shit burning, cooking my muscles. That muscle rub, but it make my shit feel a little bit better. It makes my shit feel a little bit better. So now I'm pouring mad muscle rub on my shit, rubbing that shit into my shit. My shit mad minty. I got the whole dorm smelling like motherfucking cools. Like three, like 30 boxes of cools. Nigga, that's how much menthol was on my arms. You feel me? The whole dorm like, damn, man, what's all that motherfucking minty menthol shit? Nigga's like, this nigga right here, this nigga arms locked up. Some my shit addicted to that muscle rub shit my nigga i'm going through a tube a day of that shit like this yo i'm going to niggas who just got that shit from when they sprained something months ago and they never used all they shit i'm like son you using that muscle rub i give you a can of tuna fish for that right now Niggas like all right bet now my shit just getting tubes of muscle rub from all over my nigga i'm squeezing the whole bottle on my shit shit like a toothpaste tube i'm squeezing the whole shit on my shit my shit like Real talk, rubbing that shit in, my shit burning, my nigga. I'm like, yo, I can't wait for this shit to be over, my nigga. I'm asking niggas that work out, yo, how long you think this shit gonna last, my nigga? 
How long you think this shit gonna stay like this? Know what I mean? Niggas like, yo, bro, I don't know, man. That shit could be a day. That shit could be two days. That shit could be three days. I don't know. I'm like, come on, my nigga. Son, my shit roasting. My shit roasting. That's word to everything I love, son. My shit was so locked up. My shit was so locked up. I was trying to sleep. And I was trying to smash my arms. Like, pull my arms down and go to sleep. Like, I would try to pull. I would lay down on my side. Hold on. I'm going to have to show y'all niggas. I'm in Harlem, man. Shout out to Harlem. Heard we out here. But look, let me tell you, let me show you. Like, boom. Like, this was my bed, right? It's my back seat, right? I say this is my bed. My arms were so fucked up. My arms were so fucked up. I was laying on my arms like this, right? I would go to sleep and I try to lay on my arms, but I would do both my arms. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I would I would lay on both of my arms and try to stretch them out while I sleep so that they, they stop locking up. So now I'm going to sleep, laying on both of my arms, shit in mad pain, my nigga. Shit, dumb pain to stretch that shit out. You feel what I'm saying? So my shit waking up, I'm laying on my motherfucking arms. Know what I mean? Like, yeah, this is gonna correct the problem. Nigga, I wake up in the morning. Soon as I get up, get up out my bed, my shit just be like this. Boing! Real talk, both my shits again. Shit just pop right back up. Boing! So for like fucking three or four days, my nigga, maybe even longer than that. Maybe like five days, bro. Maybe like for five days straight, my shit was locked up, nigga. Heat lock. You heard? Lock in the sock. Motherfucking the locks. You heard? My shit was the locks. My shit was a rap, bro. So once again, I learned a valuable lesson. I mean, don't bite off more than you could chew. If niggas who work out is giving you advice, telling you stop motherfucking overworking because you just starting. Listen to them niggas because I've done this to myself again. Like thinking that, you know, when I fell off working out, I could come back and jump back in and the lockouts, the lock up shit ain't never going to happen again. It happens again, bro. If you don't work out for about six, seven months, and you try to come back doing heavy curls, heavy pull-up bar, your shit gonna lock up, nigga. Your shit gonna be the locks. You heard? Vega with cream cheese and locks. But my shit was fucked up, bro. I was fucked up bad, bro. You feel me? I was fucked up bad, and it turned me off from working out. But eventually, I got back up on that bar. Then I started doing pull-ups by myself. And eventually, I became pretty great on the bar, my nigga. I wasn't no super-duper hundred a clip, like Butch and them niggas. I wasn't doing no hundreds a clip. But I was, you know, in my prime, I'd be doing, you know, 12, 13 pull-ups. And I might do 20 sets. You feel what I'm saying? So, I love the bar. Pause. You heard? But... That bar is the best, my nigga. It ain't no other, it's no other calisthenic, no other weight, no workout in the world that's gonna get you in more shape and physical condition than that pull-up bar, bro. I mean, leave a comment if you disagree or leave a comment if you agree. That pull-up bar will change your whole perspective on life. You heard? That pull-up bar will make you a man. A lot of niggas can lift a bunch of weight, but they can't pull up their own body weight, my nigga. So if you had to escape from a situation, how you gonna do it? You can lift 500 pounds, but you can't pull yourself up over the fence. You feel what I'm saying? It's not a good look. So you feel me? I gotta get back on my bar game and get my shit back together. But I'll tell you this much, when I'm starting back over on my bar, I'll take it very lightly, my nigga. You heard? Because I ain't trying to be big with locks and cream cheese again, my nigga. My shit was twisted. And that's a fact. Z-Man, Suicide Polo with the Ski Man. You heard? Holla at me. I'm officially back in the yard. You heard? I'm officially in the North Big Yard. You heard? But yo, check it. Right? So I was telling y'all dudes when I was in green and... It was about to go down between the Muslims and the team over Papa Jock. You heard? I told y'all about that. 
And remember I told you I was standing in the yard with my bro twin, I born, and um the Muslims was pointing at me and I ain't know it. And my bro twin was like, yo, why all these Muslims pointing at you, son? You heard? And recently my bro twin, I born the guard, he hollered at me. You heard show is moving out there. People getting notified, you heard? So that's a good look. But shout out to the bro twin, that's the guard piece. But yo, check it. So yeah, they packed me up. They packed me up. They mysteriously packed me up out of green and sent me to Hudson. Now, like I told you, Hudson, they call Hudson Happy Hudson because it has always had the reputation of being a very laid back prison. You feel me? Where dudes is able to get single man rooms. And this is why it's laid back because Dudes can get their hands on single man rooms where you got a room with a door and a key. You feel what I'm saying? So when niggas get those rooms, they be into all type of stuff. You heard? Dudes want those rooms so they can smoke weed in peace and do whatever they need to do in peace. You feel what I'm saying? So when they get those rooms, nobody's really trying to lose that, bro. You're not trying to go from, from a cell or a dorm with 50 motherfuckers in it, 60 motherfuckers in it, and then... You in a one-man room and you lose that, you be hurt. You feel what I'm saying? So in Hudson, the whole uh, the whole reasoning of everybody trying to chill is because everybody's trying to get their hands on a one-man room. You feel what I'm saying? So they could do whatever illegal activities they want to do in person. And some people just want the privacy of having a one-man room. You feel what I'm saying? So this is why they call it Happy Hudson because... Niggas be happy to get them one man rooms. So check it. When I pop up in Hudson, I'm already tight. They pack me up from green. I'm mad. You feel what I'm saying? So when I come to Hudson, I'm kind of, I'm kind of down. I'm like, damn. I mean, I'm leaving the team. I left the team. Yo, niggas told me like, yo, it's mad at the team in Hudson. I was in green. So I'm like, where, who? And, and you know, niggas be knowing a couple of names, but niggas don't be remembering exactly who went to Hudson. So when I come through the Hudson, soon as I get through the door, I see it's the whole team there. You feel what I'm saying? My nigga Clint from Flatbush. You feel me? My Trini nigga Clint from Flatbush. That's my son. Know what I mean? Son was there. Um, My nigga Shug, the nigga Marvell. Son that be on the channel. Not mean telling stories on the channel. My nigga Shug. Son is from up the hill, Herkimer, Flatbush, the star. Son from all over BK. But son was in green with us. Let me see. Wop. I don't, I don't remember if WAP got there before me or after me, but WAP eventually came. My nigga T-Dubs, you heard? My nigga PD Weistro, a.k.a. my nigga Pistol, you heard from the Ville up the hill. We had the, mo yo, the Monster Squad was there, my nigga. Um, PD had just came up north. He wasn't in green yet. He would eventually go to green, but he, was, he wasn't in green yet. So Sun was just, Sun came straight to Hudson. You feel me? Um, who else was there? So I don't want to forget niggas, but um, the nigga V from LH, dark skin V, that stupid nice and ball, legend Brownsville legend, son was there. My nigga Smooth from from LH and my projects, know what I mean? My nigga Smooth, my fucking son, you heard? Who else was there, man? In Hudson, man, it was a squad, bro. It was the squad was the squad was on deck. You heard? So when I got there, it was like, you know, going to a baby green. Clint old niggas like, yo, son, what up, son? Yo, we in here mad deep. You heard? So oh my nigga big head ass D. Big head ass nigga D from the Bronx. Fat nigga ass D from the Bronx. My son. You heard? My nigga Wes Craven, aka my nigga Snipes from Marcy. You heard? That's turf, brother. That's my fucking son. You heard? It was, it was mad niggas there. More niggas will come back to me as I tell the story. But anyway, I come to Hudson. You feel what I'm saying? But anyway, I come to Hudson and I already see the unit is there. So you understand what I'm saying? It's going to be some shit up in this jail. So niggas is telling me the ins and outs of the jail. Yo, son, boom, and go like this. These the outside clearance dorms. These the dorms that boom, boom, boom. Now I mean, niggas be trying to get into bullshit programs. So niggas just be chilling, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to get a one. Niggas trying to get one man rooms and all of that, my nigga, so we could get these heavy trees in here and all of that shit. You feel what I'm saying? So, so boom, it was like this. Brooklyn was mad deep. 
Harlem was kind of deep too. My nigga John Ryder from St. Nick, you feel what I'm saying? Um, my nigga Mike Ease, rest in peace. My motherfucking heart. I got a, a crazy story about Mike Ease that I'm gonna I'm tell on. I'm gonna tell with this Hudson shit. Now I mean, um, it was a lot of Harlem niggas, man. I can't remember every single nigga. You understand what I'm saying? But Ryder was like the ringleader of them niggas, and Ryder was in the dorm with me, and. It was a little bit of tension between Brooklyn and Harlem. Like, wasn't no major tension, but it was a little bit of tension. And we both had a mad squad. You heard? We both had a mad squad. So in the jail, it was like whispers on some, like, who really going to run the jail? The Brooklyn niggas or the Harlem niggas? You heard? So it was some tension. Like, it was a couple. I forgot what happened. Some shit had happened where niggas had some words or some shit like that with niggas or whatever. And it was mad tension in the jail. And niggas thought Harlem and Brooklyn was going to end up popping off on each other. And me and a nigga, Rada, we just came together and deaded that whole shit and unified the teams. You heard? So now niggas thought it was going to be two separate power. It's going to be a power struggle with two separate entities. Nah, me and a nigga, Rada. We poly. I told son, listen, nigga, not me. I respect you and your team. Not I mean, I see how y'all niggas moving, son. Like, y'all respect you and your team. I see how y'all niggas moving. So fuck that, my nigga. Instead of being opposition, let's form the super team. You heard? And we formed the super team. So now the team was Brooklyn and Harlem. You heard? And Queens upstate. Yo, we had the monster squad. You heard? We had the monster squad, my nigga. But we formulated a crazy team, Harlem and Brooklyn. So now we rocking together. You heard? We start rocking together. Now I mean, I meet my nigga Ease. My, my son Mike, shorty blood that was on the channel. You understand what I'm saying? My son from 112. Now I mean, son was there. Um, He was in the house with me. And it would be more niggas that would come to the jail that I'm going to get, I'm going to talk about later on. But that was the Harlem squad. Like my nigga Mike Ease. Um, Ryder, um, my nigga Mike, Shorty Blood, like, you feel me? Them niggas had their little team of hitters, you feel what I'm saying? And we had our team. So once we formulated the, the, the super mega colossal team, it really was over. We smashed the whole Hudson, you heard? So it was this nigga in my dorm, right? Like, you know, I'm G-O-D and shit. I'm God body, but realistically, I don't be on that super duper OD guard body shit all day, every day. Cause to me in jail, I'm not going to be on it like that because I know in the streets, I'm going to run the streets. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not going to be in the streets just being a, 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 a mad super scientist and a nerd. I'm not going to do that. So I'm not going to front in the penitentiary. Like at that time, I'm in my twenties at this time. I'm not going to front in the penitentiary. Like you know what I mean? I'm that militant and disciplined. I'm a deep nigga. I fuck with these lessons heavy, but I'm, I'm a Brooklyn nigga and I'm in, I'm going to be in these streets. You feel what I'm saying? So it was this one dude. I forgot son's name, man. Real talk. But he was a guard body nigga, but he was an older nigga than us. I'm in my twenties. Son probably was like, um, 40 years old, maybe 35, 36 years old or whatever. You feel me? So this nigga used to be on some extra super guard body shit. Hey, yo, peace, God, what's today's mathematics? You understand what I'm saying? Like, just one of those niggas, niggas, 8 o'clock in the morning, nigga like this. Peace, God, what's today's degrees? you like, yo, bro, my nigga, chill out. I just woke up. You understand what I'm saying? He was one of them niggas. So we used to call a nigga super guard. He was like, this nigga super guard, man. You understand what I'm saying? Like, here this nigga come. So eventually he kind of got the drift. That, bro, listen, we G-O-D, but all of that running up on me, yo, what's today's math and all of that? I'm not with none of that, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Don't approach me out of nowhere talking none of that shit, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Trying to see if you can catch a nigga stumbling. Peace. What's today's science in the, in the Yo, son, chill. Chill out, bro. Know what I mean? So, like, yo, check it, right? So, boom. So, like I said, we used to call this nigga Super God. Every time I see nigga, he had the mad combat boots on. Not me. Some was an I right, nigga, but he just was dumb, wild, militant. Nigga had the combat boots on. Nigga be walking mad soldier like. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know if some was a soldier or whatever, but not me. Some was carrying himself like Sergeant Slaughter of the Guards. You heard? And then also, this is Hudson. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, this is happy, laid back Hudson. Like, you know what I mean, bro? Like, I don't know if you would be. I don't know if you would be like this in green or calm stock or I don't know if you would be the same type of person. 
So it's like, I mean, in here you want some militant running up on nigga shit. But I don't know if you would get away with that behind the wall or anything like that. So I just be staying away from shit like that. So boom. So boom, right? So like I said, we be avoiding the shit out this nigga super guard, right? So um, niggas used to be in my house making hooch. Like, you know, jailhouse hooch and shit. Like, I never fucked with that shit because I was scared to die from that shit. Like, it was rumors niggas done got alcohol poisoning, died, shit all tight. Because niggas, you don't know, you don't know what niggas is doing. Niggas making that shit in the fucking vacuum cleaner or some shit. Like, the, the, the house's vacuum cleaner or something that the police had. Niggas have had that shit stashed under the vacuum cleaner or whatever the fuck niggas was doing. I can't, I've been in several jails where niggas was making hooch. You understand what I'm saying? And niggas would have that shit stashed crazy places in a plastic bag. You understand what I'm saying? With the bread and the sugar and the fruit. And they be making the fucking wine. You understand what I'm saying? And niggas be having that shit in there for months and shit. Trying to make that shit as strong as possible. So I, I really don't fuck with that shit, right? I'm like, yo, I'm good. Know what I mean? Be Thanksgiving, niggas be like, yeah, nigga, I had this shit bubbling since the summertime. Like, nigga, I'm not drinking that shit. You understand what I'm saying? Niggas is crazy. So, one day, I'm asleep in my bed. I, I got a one-man room. Like, I'm going to get to that, how I got a one-man room. See, this is what I'm saying. All right, I'm skipping through shit. I'm going to I'm gonna have to rewind. You understand what I'm saying? But this is at the time where I actually had a one-man room, right? So, my nigga E's, rest in peace from Harlem. This nigga, this nigga has always been a... a like when something go down, son be like, yo, son, where the mother son? Yo, like he always type of nigga, he's scared the shit out of me. You understand what I'm saying? Out of nowhere over shit, right? So I'm sleeping my motherfucking, I'm sleeping my in my one man room. This nigga busts through my door. It gotta be like one in the morning or some shit like that. This nigga busts through my door. Boom, yo, son. Yo. I'm like, yo, yo, what up? What up? I'm sleeping. I'm like, you know, we was listening to shit like. That nigga Wap would tell you. My nigga Wap from D Block 354, he would tell you. We was listening to this nigga named Art Bell. Like, this nigga had a scary ass show, my nigga, back in the days. I'm gonna get it's gonna be a whole episode about Art Bell. You understand what I'm saying? But we used to be shook at nighttime after listening to that motherfucking show. So here this nigga come busting in my shit. I'm like this. Yo, 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 what's up? He like this. Yo, son, you got anything in here? I'm like, I'm half sleep, my nigga. So I don't, I'm like, what? He like, you got any weapons in here, drugs in here, got weed in here? So I said, I said, yeah, yeah, why, what's up? He said, yo, stash that shit, son. Stash everything. You understand what I'm saying? Boof everything. So I'm like this. He like, yo, boof everything. I said, what happened? What happened? He said, yo, the nigga super guard. He said, yo, that nigga pissy drunk, my nigga, off that hooch. And that nigga screaming at the top of his lungs, throwing up with alcohol poisoning. You feel me? It's only a matter of time before the squad come up in here and search everything for this hooch. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, good looking, my nigga. You heard? So I had to go to the bathroom. I had dank. I had to boof that shit, boof my rug cutter. You understand what I'm saying? And have all of that shit off the scene because these niggas was coming. So boom. When I go to the bathroom, I hear this nigga. He like this. Real talk, my nigga. This nigga, this the nigga we call Super God. You heard? This nigga right here is... Military man guard You heard This nigga like this uh, You know that alcohol poisoning Ain't no joke bro That shit had you screaming to the heavens You heard That nigga was like uh, I can't even do it for how long Pause he was doing that shit That nigga was like uh, I'm like Oh man let me go boof this shit Cause they coming so niggas is trying to like keep the nigga quiet. He's pissy drunk, bro. He like this. Get the fuck off me. Get off me. Get the fuck off me. I'm like, yo, hold on. Is this super God? You heard? Is this the nigga that be running down on niggas for the math all day, every day? And born in the sciences and all of that? Nigga, yo, this nigga screaming at the top of his lungs, my nigga. And when that, you know, that alcohol poisoning, that shit, like, it come and go. So when that shit hits your stomach, that shit be like, oh, and nigga was like, oh, get the fuck off me. 
I'm like, it's a rap, nigga. The whole dorm going down. Sure enough, them niggas come. They throw the nigga on the stretcher. He trying to fight the police. Get off me. Get the fuck off me. Nigga swinging, nigga throwing up. Throwing all up in the motherfucking, in the, in the hallway of the fucking dorm. Because Hudson is like, it's cottages. So it's like, uh, it's like a house. It's like a, a giant boarding school for orphans or something like that. It's the best I could describe it. It's like an orphan, a orphanage. You feel what I'm saying? So it's different rooms. You got the eight man room, the 10 man room, the three man room. I mean, whatever, like four man room, five man room, then the one man rooms, two man rooms. You feel what I'm saying? So you work your way up to the one man room. So I'm, I'm like this going back to my motherfucking room. Police coming in there mad deep, five, six niggas. They throw the nigga on the stretcher. They get the nigga out. Like I said, he trying to grab the police, fight the police. Nigga, them niggas came in, searched every fucking joint, everywhere they could find for the hooch until they found that shit. Niggas came out with two big ass bags, garbage bags full of hooch. Know what I mean? They wrote that nigga up and they got that nigga out to jail. But first he had to go to the infirmary to get better. Next day, nigga, they, they call programs. We go out the programs. <laughs> I see that nigga. I see that nigga super guard. He like going to medical. He behind some shit going to medical where he can't really interact with us. And I see the nigga. I'm like, peace. Peace to the God. That nigga was like, peace. That nigga was embarrassed, my nigga. Real talk. I never saw that nigga that laid back. That nigga shit was like, peace. I'm like, yo, my nigga. Any other day, nigga be like, peace to the gods, almighty lord of lords, world creators of worlds. We be in the yard chilling, smoking or something. That nigga's just scared the shit out of niggas come out of nowhere. Peace to the god, Allah, black man, god, lord. He be like this, yo, the fuck? This nigga super god, man. Real talk. But nah, that was my nigga, but that hooch had him fucked up, you heard? That hooch had that nigga hollering. Ah! I'm like, yo, this is why <laughs> I would never, ever fuck with that jailhouse hooch, my nigga. I'm Gucci. Now, no, hold on. Let me correct that. Let me correct that. It was a point in time when I first came up north. Niggas was trying to put me onto the hooch game. Like I told y'all niggas, I was in Auburn. I mean, in Clinton, trying to make jailhouse hooch. Niggas had taught me that shit in downstate. But I'm talking about two, three day process where it be a little bit of alcohol in your shit. These niggas had shit for three, four months. I'm Gucci with that. Niggas trying to make Hennessy in that motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying? I'm Gucci. But it's like, yo, that shit was dumb funny, my nigga, but... Here I go at Happy Hudson. I'm going to tell the whole story, man. You know what I mean? Because it's a long, long. And then after I'm finished telling each part, I'm going to put the shit together as it's going to be like a two-hour movie, my nigga. Happy Hudson, the movie. You heard? But I got to do it in segments now because it's ridiculously long. Pause. You know what I mean? But this is the jail where I, rep I met my nigga Murder. Rest in peace. Crazy story about murder with this shit. All of that's coming soon, man. You know what I mean? But yo, Gen Pop fam, we in the motherfucking building. LAZ, Z Man, Suicide Polo, you already know what it is. The views is getting crazy, bro. Texas is the Texas is the is the second most watched in the state. You heard? Forgot what's third and fourth. I'm gonna put it up on the screen right here. You understand what I'm saying? But the views is getting wild, my niggas. You heard? We doing it. We doing it. We pushing four million views this year alone. In the last 10 months, you heard? So we doing this shit for real, my nigga. Holla at me. Oh yo, check it. One thing I forgot to mention. Um, when my dude twin, our born, hollered at me that I spoke about in the story about when we got into beef with the Muslims over Papa Jock and all of that. Son told me that after I left, shit did actually pop off and a couple of motherfuckers left the jail. You feel what I'm saying? So I ain't know none of that because I was over there in Hudson and you know, them kites be late. But um, yeah, some put me on like, yo, yeah, son, it, it went down and a few motherfuckers left the jail. So you understand what I'm saying? That's just that tidbit of information. For anybody who remembers the story on when I got packed up from green. I'm about to re-release all of that green shit too. 
You heard? Because a lot of that shit was early on in the channel before I was popping at all. So I'm about to re-release all of that green shit. You heard? But yeah, that's the business. LAZ. You know, when I came home from, from jail, I came home directly into the, the internet age. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, at the time, I remember when I was up north and the internet was first coming out. And, and they used to try to give us little classes and co little computer classes up north. I ain't want no parts of it. I'm like, I ain't fucking with that internet shit. I done read too much Dr. York books and all type of wildness talking about the internet. I'm like, I ain't getting caught up in that. You feel me? But when I came home, I started finding out what that internet was about. You heard? And when I came home, this was back when like, dudes was messing with AOL and AIM. Remember when they used to get those little discs out? Like, they used to get those little discs out at the supermarket and cereal boxes and all type of shit. Like, or they was at the checkout counter, just free AOL discs that you go home, put the AOL disc in your computer, make a screen name, and they gave you a free AIM account. AIM was popping, bro. AIM was popping. AIM was my first taste AIM was my first taste of the internet. And when I started messing with AIM, I ain't even gonna hold you. Like, first of all, like I said, I came home from doing six years in the penitentiary. You heard from the ages of like 16. Then I got went home on bail for four months, came back 17. From 17 to like 23, I was in the can. So in, in those years, those is the years where a dude is in these streets soiling his royal oats to say the least you heard so the times where i was supposed to be in the streets soiling my royal oats i was in the penitentiary you heard with a big batch of black tail magazines but basically like i said man i came home straight to the internet popping straight to aim popping i made me an aim name and i started mingling in them chat rooms bruh Remember how them AIM chat rooms used to be. So when I came home, I mean, I was messing with my first baby moms for a period of time. You heard, but I ain't even gonna hold you. I still had, I still had a chip on my shoulder and animosity that she ain't really do that bad with the kid. You heard, but like I said, she was super young. I left her super young, pregnant in the can to go do six years you feel what i'm saying so it ain't her fault either but i still felt ways that she ain't do that bid like that with me so eventually i got into another relationship now i mean i was when i was with my ex bro kima kima was a real good chick you understand what i'm saying she had roots for my projects she used to live in my projects at one time in howard you understand she was from the star but me and kima was together for years and we had an ill relationship you heard but we were still both young and a dude like me, I was fresh out the penitentiary. And it was no way in the world I was just going to be with one chick. You heard? And Kima was the type of chick that she go crazy thinking about a nigga messing with other broads and all of that. And, and a dude like me, a Gemini dude like me, listen, bruh, I need a long ass leash. Pause. You know how if you tie a dog to a motherfucking tree with a short leash, he going to go crazy. But if you tie a dog to a tree with a long ass leash and he could walk around the whole backyard, then, you know, he forgets he's even more on a leash, my nigga. So a dude like me, I need a long ass leash, bro. If that leash, if that leash is short, it ain't going to work out. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the Gemini nigga in me. Yeah, so you know what I mean? I was in that AOL game. I was meeting some things. I was meeting some things on that AOL, you heard? So I meet this chick. I'm not even going to say where she's from. Let's just say she's from Connecticut, right? So we start poly and we talking. We vibing. You heard? I like the chick now. At the time, I'm like probably like 24. You heard? And she's probably like 35, 36. So I'm feeling myself like this is the first time I'm going to have an older chick or anything older than myself like you feel what i'm saying like i had chicks a couple of years older than me 
but I ain't never had no chick 10 and 12 years older than me. So I'm feeling myself. I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? So me and this chick vibing, we talking, vibing. So, you know what I mean? I ended up getting up with the chick. Got up with her, thrashed her crazy, you heard? We go to the motel, dirty ass motels. Nowadays, I can't even, I go in them dirty ass motels, I can't even get in the vibe, bruh. I can't even get in the vibe because the motels be dirty, you heard? So it's like, but back in them days, I just came home from the can. I'm a young nigga in my 20s. I'm trying to thrash whatever I could thrash, you heard? So I get up with this chick. We go to the, we go to the motel, thrashed her. Now, she was a decent chick, you heard? Like, I mean, as far as my judgment on the chick, she was a decent chick. When I say she was a decent chick, I mean, you know what I mean? She wasn't the type of chick that, you know, you got to watch her back around because she was scandalous or greasy. She wasn't that type of chick. She was a decent chick. You know what I mean? She had her own money. She worked. You feel what I'm saying? But she was running around AOL and AIM like me at the time. And then MySpace came into play. You heard? When MySpace came into play, things got even crazier. But um, as far as AIM is concerned, like I said, I used to be in them AIM groups and chats and I used to be meeting and bagging chicks left and right. I'm fucking with this broad, but both of us is, we just friends. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm not talking no serious shit with her. She not talking no serious shit with me. We just chilling, doing us. And I'm still with my, my chick, Kima, but I don't really live with her. I be off and on. She, she had a crib in the star. I be in her crib sometimes. Sometimes I be in Dykeman, you heard? This chick, she finds out about the AOL chick that I'm talking to. Now she beefing all day. Yo, yo, you fucking with this dirty bitch online and all of this. I'm like, yo, bro, listen. Yo, you talking to chicks online? These dirty bitches online? AIDS, diseased bitches? I'm like, yo, bro, why you got to take things to that level? Like, I mean, I'm chatting with a chick online. You talking about the broad is an AIDS, disease, HIV infested. And I'm like, yo, come on, bro. So I'm hearing this all day. Yo, know what I mean? I don't trust these chicks out here. These chicks be having all type of diseases. You want to bring a disease home? I'm hearing this shit all day. I'm like, yo, bro, listen. I just came home from doing six in the piece. You heard? I just did six long pieces. Pause. I can't do that. I can't do that every day. So like I said, me and this chick was just friends. We wasn't all serious. This chick, my broad, she, she taking it all serious. Like, I got a bad, real mistress. You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, you bugging out with that shit. So she wouldn't leave it alone. We ended up stop fucking with each other. That's a fact. And it was mostly over me fucking with chicks on the internet. But this one chick in particular, you understand? She was sitting around painting a picture of this chick and a scenario of this chick on what I'm doing with this chick in her head. And it was wrong. So we ended up not fucking with each other over that. So now that I don't fuck with her no more, fuck it, nigga. I'm in the field like Dave Winfield, you heard? Now it's really on with AIM and uh, MySpace and all of that. It's on like popcorn, nigga. Forget about it. Now I'm going in. Now I'm living that single, single life. I was tight. Don't get me wrong. I was fucked up about breaking up with my broad and all of that i was tight i lost a good one you heard i had lost a good one at the time but like i said we both was young we thought we was grown as a motherfucker but we was in our 20s and we was young you understand what i'm saying and when you in your 20s my nigga you ain't really ready to settle down like that not no man anyway not no dude like me in my 20s settled down for the rest of my life it wasn't happening bro so like i said single single life and I got up with this chick. We did us several times. So now, you know, the chick is a useful chick. She ain't no, she ain't no chick that's, she ain't no chick that's not useful. You understand what I'm saying? Like this bro was dropped. This bro was hitting me with guap, hitting me with weed. You understand what I'm saying? Food, anything and everything that I possibly could have needed or wanted, she was holding me down with. You understand what I'm saying? Like I'ma keep it real. She was a, she was a useful and a valuable chick. I'm talking about like. I was a dude fresh out the penitentiary and this this chick used to be hitting me with a hundred cash a day. 
You understand what I'm saying? Like, it was times where this chick was hitting me with a hundred cash a day. Western Union. You understand what I'm saying? Like, boom. When she came to, when she came to New York, she was hitting me with ounces of weed. Your head holeless. Boom. You heard? So a nigga, so she had her little perks. After a year or so messing with the chick, you understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, we going to motel after motel. I'm going to her crib sometimes. She coming to my crib sometimes. I mean, we we running all around the city, smoking a thousand pounds of weed. I'm in Dykeman running through all type of chicks. It's like, yo. So then I started feeling like, all right, man, like, you know what I mean? I like you, you a good chick, but what we gonna do? Like, we just gonna fuck? We gonna fuck every other day until we drop dead? Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, what are we really getting accomplished? Like, I mean, I know you putting, give, you, you hitting, hitting me with a little bit of bread, weed, shit like that, but I'm just saying, like, what exactly am I getting accomplished by running around just piping out a bunch of broads? Like, you understand what I'm saying? Or this chick in particular, like, like I said, good chick, good perks. You understand what I'm saying? But after you, after you done pipe something ten times, it's like, what is we doing here? Like, you heard? Like, what are we really doing here? So, so I started feeling like, this is a futile existence, my nigga. Like, just piping chicks, running around. Piping a chick here, piping a chick there, like, what am I really getting accomplished? So, it's funny what gives you an epiphany. You heard? It's funny what will give you an epiphany in life. What will make you open your eyes and wake up. So, like I said, I'm messing with this chick off and on for a couple of years. Like, we we all over the place with it. You understand what I'm saying? We be in Bronx. We be, we just be all over the place with it. You understand? And I'm basically just a young nigga that just came home from jail. Chick a little, I got a chick that's a little 10, 12 years older than me. With a little couple of dollars, you heard. And I'm just going along for the ride. You feel me? But I'm starting to get bored, bruh. I'm not I'm not only starting to get bored, I'm just starting to feel like I'm not getting nothing accomplished. I'm just in the streets doing dumb shit. So one day I go get up with this chick. Now it's like late night and shit. She like, yo, I got to go check my cousin out in the Bronx. So I'm like, we done been to other parts of the Bronx where she had family at. Wild ass Davidsons and Burnsides and, you know what I mean? Places where niggas shouldn't really just be roaming around. Young looking ass nigga like me at the time. So, so yeah, she like, yo, I got to go check my cousin. So I'm like, yo, all right, fuck it, let's roll. It's like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. By the time we head over there, we head over there. Her cousin lives in Vietnam Projects. That's a little projects that's right next to the court buildings in the Bronx. And that shit is out of control, you heard? Hence the name Vietnam. That shit out of control, my nigga. And it's not the place you need to be at. At 1, 2 o'clock in the morning on a summer night or on a winter night or any night. If you don't know the history of that project's Vietnam in the Bronx, do some research on that shit. That shit is nuts. So I'm in Vietnam with this broad at 1, 2 in the morning. I'm starting to think to myself, what am I doing here? Like, why, I, why am I in one of the worst of the worst hoods in New York City? For what? Like, I mean, for some pussy? Like, I had the pussy already. Like, you understand what I'm saying? What am I doing? So this is why I call this series When Chasing Your Eggplant Goes Wrong. You understand? Because all of us dudes, sometimes, we chase our dick into into dangerous situations and obstacles and we make obstacles for ourselves in life by chasing our dick like and letting our dick think for our think for us you understand what i'm saying like 
sometimes we be thinking with the wrong head. You feel what I'm saying? So here I am in Vietnam projects, one, two in the morning. We go up to the crib. We go up to our cousin crib. We come up in the crib and shit. You understand what I'm saying? It's a very hood atmosphere. Atmosphere is very hood. I'm like, why am I in this super hood atmosphere right now? Like, I could stay home and be in the projects. I could stay home and be, you know, in the slums and shit. Why am I in, why am I in other people's slums? Rolling around with a broad. That's not even from out here. That doesn't really... That's a female that's kind of naive to the streets. That's another thing. Like, you know... You gotta... Sometimes in these, when you in these streets with a chick... You gotta think for them. Because... They be a little bit naive. Like, you know what I'm saying? Chicks don't gun each other down in the middle of the street. Niggas do. You feel what I'm saying? So they, they be a little bit naive to how dangerous the streets really are. So I'm in this chick's cousin's crib. It's late. Everybody in the house is asleep. We up, rolling a hundred blunts. Like just meaningless shit. You understand what I'm saying? Doing meaningless shit. I'm not I'm not really feeling the atmosphere. I mean, I'm questioning, you know, am I stupid for being here? So I say, yo, let me let me go use the bathroom, right? So like I said, you be surprised in life what give what wakes you up and what gives you an epiphany. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, let me, let me use the bathroom right quick. So I go to the bathroom in this apartment. I just gotta take a piss. I go to the bathroom, and this is when I had the epiphany. I walk in the bathroom, I look at the toilet, I said, all right, let me take a piss and go sit my ass down somewhere. I look down on the bathroom sink. And I saw something that really disturbed me and changed my life forever. On the sink was a Chinese restaurant rib tip. You know the rib tips from the Chinese restaurant and how they look when somebody eat the meat out of them and only leave the little stubble part back with the white part showing and it's a rib tip. It was a rib tip on the bathroom sink. And it was a roach on that rib tip just doing him like he just was on the rib tip like tolo like just doing him so at this moment i'm looking at the rib tip and i'm looking at the roach and i said to myself what type of person what type of human being just leaves a rib tip on their bathroom sink. I came in here to take a piss. I gotta see a roach dining dolo on a Chinese rest, a hood Chinese restaurant rib tip. I ain't even take no piss, my nigga. I was so pissed off. That shit shook me up and woke and sobered me up so fast. I was like, Laz, what the fuck are you doing, my nigga? What the fuck are you doing? Why the fuck are you in one of the worst projects in the fucking Bronx looking at a fucking roach on a rib tip, my nigga? What are you doing here? And where did you make a wrong turn? And where did you go wrong, my nigga? It's time to get your shit together, nigga. It's time to raise your motherfucking standards for these motherfucking broads and what you expect out of a broad, nigga. And it's time to raise your motherfucking standards on where you hang out and who you be around. What the fuck is this, nigga? So I stared at that rib tip and that roach I said, nigga, 
I would never put myself, I would never put myself in a situation like this again, nigga. I'm too fly for this shit. What the fuck am I doing? This motherfucking roach on that rib tip, nigga. If I could find that roach, I want to thank that roach. Because that roach woke me the fuck up that day. That roach made me realize, nigga, this is some bullshit. And I need to get my shit together. And I need to get my Mac up. And I need to get my bread up. And I need to start doing big things, nigga. You heard? Or else I'll be in the motherfucking hood watching roaches eat rib tips for the rest of my motherfucking life, nigga. You heard? So I said to myself, Laz, you got to stop chasing your dick, my nigga. You got to stop going out your way and doing extra shit just to fuck, to be around some bro for some pussy. It's not that serious, my nigga. It's not that serious. Pussy ain't going nowhere, but money is. This was the day I realized, bro. So like I said, wherever that roach may be, I appreciate you, my bro, because you made me open my eyes and say to myself, don't chase your dick. Chase the bag. You understand what I'm saying? Like I said, it wasn't the chick's fault. It was just my fault because... I, I just was in the game for some weed and pussy. You feel what I'm saying? I'm running around chasing weed and pussy and a couple of dollars, a couple of hundred dollars. That shit corny, bro. You know what I mean, you got to step your shit up and, and move on to bigger things, baby. I kind of learned from that day. But, you know, I was still in the field. I was still in the field, my nigga. You heard? Like Jesse Barfield, I was still out there. You heard? And I got a whole bunch more stories of... My adventures with AOL and MySpace and chasing the old eggplant. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, I can't share all of them with you because some of them are just ridiculous. And that's a fact. LAZ. Y'all go join that membership, you heard? That membership is climbing, baby. Let's get it in.